break, I started to code with the calcite method, and I put a rather tough tolerance there. I think it was 10 to the minus uh, 10, but you see it was not reached by far uh, by in, within 1,000 uh, iterations. So uh, what I checked there was the change. So here I called my unknown, not you, but psi. And uh, so it was changed, uh, it was checked the difference of the iteration level 1000, the change that is from, uh, from 999 to 1000, that was related to the change from 0 to 1. So then it is, uh, then you could say that what we had in our um, um, uh, stopping criterion that we have divided by the initial iteration error. So that is then on the left hand side and that is then here at a level of 10 to the minus 5. And the residual actually has a similar um, size. We'll see what that is in a minute. But what we can say is that this takes uh, long, takes many iterations and takes uh, a lot of CPU time to do Gauss side. And therefore we are now going to see Another method that builds on the Gauss-Simon method, but is much faster. And that method is called successive over-relaxation, SOR. So that means we correct a little more, usually, than we would with the Gauss cycle. Times the A W times U I minus one J 
say at the new iteration and then it is going to be a e times u i plus one j at the old iteration because there that we don't yet have likewise the value at the northern point which is then the u i j plus one the old iteration and in our notation the minus subtract the f from x i y j and that we will divide by the center coefficient a p so that that if we would just do that not what we have written under 23 but just do that it would be gauss sign so that would be the gauss sign And if we choose, we choose here iteration, the relaxation parameter omega equal to 1, then this and this would go, and we would get the, that the new iteration would be for omega equal 1 equal to the Gauss side iteration. So that is the relation. But if we choose, as we do in SOR for elliptic problems, if we choose omega larger than 1, we then correct the old iterate by more than we would do with the Gauss side. So therefore the name successive over relaxation. Now the choice of the relaxation parameter then is the following. That is then deciding how well the iteration will work. And that is then the data. First, the one that we are considering is between 1 and 2, and that is then the over relaxation. We are correcting more than we would do with the Gauss side. And that is usually done for elliptic problems. Omega equal to 1, that is what we just saw, then we would get Gauss side. We have also the choice omega between 0 and 1 because we need omega between 0 and 2. In that case, we would have under That is usually not done for elliptic problems, but for implicit methods for hypothetical problems. And for parabolics, they are somewhere in between depending then on, on the problem. Important to know is that uh, we need convergence for omega between 0 and 1. That means if omega is smaller equal than 0, so that would be rather stupid to compute to do less, uh, do the that correction in just the other way as the duck is going, so that would fail and it go, or it turns out if omega is larger or equal than 2, so if you correct double the amount that you would do with Gauss side, then you would shoot, shoot uh, too far. So in both cases, you would get no convergence with the SLR. So that is so, 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 so you should keep away from that. So for us, the relevant interval is Quality problems between one. Now we want to write this iteration in a different form. It can also be expressed as following that we write. is equal to the old one and now we add omega times and it turns out what we have we introduce something that I already mentioned the residual that is coming here I call it little r ij that is at the old iteration level divided by 
the center coefficient AP. So the residual is the following. check how well this discrete system is satisfied, satisfying the original problem uh, a x um, equal b. But in our case we write it then with our coefficients a s u i j minus 1. So I take this as the new iteration then because we already have it. And that is then as we do also with the Gauss cycle. That is the a w a i minus 1 j is also taken at the new iteration but then we add the a p that is coming with the minus because originally it was with the plus on the left hand side so it's coming here with the minus and that is at the old iteration here because we have not yet the new one we add the a e the u i plus 1 j still at the old iteration level and we have the a n which is at u i j plus 1 at the old iteration and we have the minus f of x i y j so if you think of it then that is the original matrix a x here minus the right hand side. So if we would be fulfilling the, our linear system exactly, then that would be zero. So that is a measure of how well we satisfy our uh, linear system of equation Ax equal to b. And that is called the residual. And we are just looking here at the element ij of the residual. So this is the residual Elements I J at iteration J. So if we would solve the linear system correctly at the iteration level uh, K, then the values U K and U K plus one would be the same, and then this would be zero. So that is then also the measure of convergence. So that is, you see here, that is what I used as alternative measure. The one was the change from one iteration to the other relative to the change in the beginning. And the other is the residual. And there I did the same. I checked the residual in the beginning and uh, then at the end and related them. And in that case, it turns out they are very similar. Need, it needs not be uh, like that. But anyway, we can express then uh, our SOR also in this way. And that gives, in a way, a natural way also to control the residual while we're doing. So you could actually control both the change from the old iteration UK to the new iteration UK plus 1, and you could also control the residual. So, now let us then try to find the optimal value of omega. To do that, we first note that we can also write the SOR in the way that we started with in the beginning of factorizing the matrix A in M and N. And then we have the following, so one can show. This method that we have defined either 23 or 24 comes down to making the choice regarding um, M, the iteration matrix uh, that we take at the new time level, at the new iteration level, and the old one. In the following, we choose M in that way, which is as 1 over omega times 
the diagonal part of A plus the lower triangular part of A. That is M and N is then equal to 1 over omega minus 1 times the diagonal minus U. So that is a, a special choice, but it turns out you can show that. That's not so important for us, it's important for the analysis, because what we saw in the beginning, decisive for the convergence, is the spectral radius of M inverse times M. So that is decisive. So then we can say that this spectral radius, with this choice, M minus 1 N, with our method um, 20, let's see, 25, yeah, that is then for the SOR, that can be minimized for directly bound relations. So here we are now restricting ourselves to directly bound relations. And it turns out it is the following, and that is you find that in the textbook by Fletcher, Anderson, Tenenhill, you choose the omega, the optimal relaxation parameter omega, the following, you choose it as 2 divided by 1 plus the square root of 1 minus sigma squared. And the sigma squared that is coming from sigma, and that is actually the spectral radius of the Jacobi method. So where the sigma that is entering the equation is the following. It is 1 divided by 1 plus beta squared. I'll give that in a minute. Beta is the ratio of delta x to delta y times the cosine of pi divided by the intervals, n pi intervals. Then you would have n i plus 1 points, including the boundary points, but the intervals is n i. Um, plus beta, um, here I have to do a little check if I did it right. You find that in the textbook on page 155. It was good that I checked it. Go with this beta square. Suspected. And that is then times the cosine of pi divided by the number of intervals in the y direction. So that is, and that is, as I said, the spectral radius of the Jacobi method. Of the iteration method of the iteration matrix for the Jacobi method. So that is easy to calculate, but I just give you the, the beta. Just a moment. Thank you. 
means when we have equal uh, grid spacing in X and Y, that is simply one, but it is more general you can use light. And the Ni in the formula, that is the number of delta X intervals. So you can also say the number of cells. And as I said before, if we count all the points from including the boundaries from 1 uh, to nj plus 1, then we have n, ni plus 1, we have ni intervals. So that is in the numbers entry. By test for this problem, I found it is actually doing better for ni plus 1, but this is the formula. So we take it as it is. But we can play around with that and see. But this uh, should be uh, really the optimal choice. Nj is the number of delta y intervals. So that is the number then, of cells in the y direction. Okay. So then we can use that. And we can try it to see how that works. First, we have to change the code a little bit because I put here the omega 1, that is to get Gauss side. So we comment that. And above, you see here this part that's the beta that we have defined, the sigma, and the uh, optimal uh, omega over there. So we save that first. And then we let it run, and then we see how fast that will work compared to what was running during the break. It didn't miss very much, it was very slow. Maybe we could just uh, see if we had any more information on that. No, it was just uh, that was just the omega that we are now going to use. So we are going to use now the omega optimum to get the SOR. So then we just let it, that thing go. So there it is. So this is something above. You see the iteration count, the um, change from one time level to the other, and the residual. So here we have then the numbers. Above, um, we see that the change from one iteration to the other, relative to the initial change, has gone down. Um, below 10 to the minus 10 and uh, the residual um, that we have defined here that is then also computed the two norm of that related to the residual of the initial guess that is then come down to came down to something like 5 10 to the minus 9 here you see the result here we have x here we have y and that is a result here that is actually coming from the method of manufactured solutions. So that is something that I'll tell you in a minute. First, this is the result, this is the solution of the Poisson equation. So that has then worked uh, nicely. And we have here uh, this low, these low levels of change from one iteration to the other, and these low levels of residual within 177 iterations. Remember before, the Gauss-Seidel needed more than 1,000, and that was here then at a level of 10 to the minus 5. So much, much slower, so this is much, much faster. But with the optimal omega. So now let us do something uh, different, and that is we want now to compare things with the backslash. Of course, what we are solving is a linear system. We are solving it here with an iterative method, but we can compare these. So let's, and I call this ML divide. So that will be done first, essentially what we did in the previous exercise. And then, in contrast, also the SOR will be used. So let's see what we get out of that. First, the linear system was solved for this problem, and then we I just got these contour lines for that. 
I get the, the surf for the other one. So that was with solving with backslash. And uh, now we want to solve it also with the SOR. So that is essentially the same as we did before. Uh, and the picture is this. So let's see, we can just check the picture. The tolerance was the same, so we get similar numbers as we had before, actually the same. But this picture, now this plot is interesting. And it is showing uh, quite some, a couple of information. The first is the residual, that are these uh, circles, which level off here. So here is the number of iterations. So we get the iterations here was 177. And so that goes down from uh, 10 uh, to the 0, so from 1, it is normalized by that, to essentially here below uh, 10 to the minus 8. So 8 decades down in around 180 iterations. The change goes even further. So here you see a difference between the residual and the black uh, solid line that is the uh, iteration change. How much the iteration changes from one iteration to the next. But the iteration error, that is the difference between the solution with the iterative scheme and the exact solution with the backslash. So that's with the exact solution of the linear system. That is down here. So we see that the change in iterate is a good indication of this iteration error. So the green line is the iteration error. It shows how well do we solve our linear system AX equal to B with this iterative method with the SOR. But the red curve, that is the interesting one. That is the discretization error. That shows the difference between the numerical solution that we compute with this method at some iteration level compared to the exact solution of the PDE. That is the ultimate goal. And that is the discretization error. There you see we get to some level and then it stagnates. So what we have here is then just discretization error. Because the discretization error depends on delta x and delta y. We have a second order method, so delta x squared, delta x y squared. So that we, does not change if we get the, the linear system solved more accurately. So that, is the, so that is something that you will learn in uh, exercise 11 to distinguish between the iteration error that we have with an iterative method to solve the linear system and the discretization error that we have with the current iterate related to the exact solution of the PDE. So that is the interesting thing. So there is something to learn and to understand, and that we'll do in the in exercise 11. <coughs> now, let us uh, get a little bit more understanding here. We have not that much time left. So we have to limit things here a little bit. Let's see. <coughs> well, it turns out that is now um, we have to cut down a little bit on the uh, convergence analysis that the number of iterations that you need to get convergence is the depending is proportional to the number of unknowns squared for the uh, Gauss cycle. So that is, we, if we want to look at the number of iterations, Yeah. 
largest eigenvalue of our iteration matrix M inverse N. So and that is sometimes called the asymptotic rate of convergence. That is called the symmetric the SOR, SSOR. But to finish up, let me just briefly mention, that, so that you have heard about that, the other methods that we have. There are many other methods available, and I just give you the names of them. You can read more in the book I mentioned yesterday by Godot and Lohan and other books on numerical linear algebra. But I just want that you have heard these names and so that you are aware that there are many other methods that might be even more suitable than SOR. So briefly, other uh, iterative methods. non-symmetric 
or non-positive or negative definite matrices. Or you can use some other so-called Krylov methods. So this is a Krylov method, and also this, some other Krylov methods. They use matrix vector operations, which are beautiful for, um, for polarization. Can do that, and the method that is really nice, but we have to do things right with that, is, is the multiple method. So there you use different grid levels. You have a coarse grid, a fine grid. You get a coarser one, even coarser ones. You to get until in the end you have only one point in the grid. The trick with that is you do the error damping on the fine grid, and you do the correction on the coarse grid. And you do that grid level by grid level. That has, needs only an order of n operations, and you need only, if you do it right, something like 10 or 20, if you do things right, iterations altogether. So that is a very powerful method. Finally, just that you have, have heard of that, preconditioning is usually important, for example, to get good convergence with these methods, so that you do not solve the system as you have it, but you solve this system. M inverse, so M uh, B equal to, let's see, M uh, C equal to B to get uh, the M inverse B that should be solved easily. And then the condition number, M minus 1 A, that should be rather small. So that should be, that is the goal. Best would be choose n equal to a, but then you will just have the problem again when you solve this equation. But you, there are some nice choices for that. And the final remark is, if you want to have good software for that, you go to the Petsy library. There you find parallelized uh, routines for these CG, GMRS, Krylov, and other methods. And uh, I think the model grid may be limited, but probably they will find also something there. That's a library that is used by some of my PhD students with great success. Okay, so we stop here, and then next week we we'll have some exercises and some demos.